This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Our um, guest today is Rachel James. Thank you for coming here, Rachel. And I'm Maria Tomei. I'm guest hosting while um, Jay, both Jay and Sharon are off doing other things. So thank you for coming, Rachel. And I'd like to talk to you today about what we were talking about before, mm -hmm. you know, the envisioning our communities, envisioning our energy and, you know, how people are involved or could be involved or should they be involved with the, what we do with energy in Hawaii. Many exciting things. Yeah. Well, first, thank yeah. you for allowing me to be here. Um, it's you. a topic I care very much about, so I'm happy to share a bit with you. Um, so I guess to start with your first question is, what are people doing? Um, yeah. Hawaii is fortunate to have a community-based renewable energy program. Um, I think that's a good starting point for how communities can engage with the current electricity utility infrastructure. Yeah, thanks. And you, you, this is, I know you mentioned it's very important to you. I, mm -hmm. I guess as an energy justice um, fellow, yes. um, you're, you're thinking about these, these issues from a community point of, point exactly. of view. Exactly. Yeah. So the law school, um, William S. Richardson School of Law at UH Manoa, um, has an energy justice program. And historically, um, our program focus has been to engage communities largely for the purpose of community capacity building. Um, and so instead of kind of giving information that's broad and not necessarily specific, um, we've come to communities on the invitation to receive information about a particular energy topic. Um, so the program started about three or four years ago, and those first couple of years, there was um, information that was shared about the next era proposed merger because that was a hot topic. Yeah. Um, and so some program fellows went to the North Shore. They did a lot of um, research. They met with community groups there. And they presented information definitely from a legal perspective, kind of policy leaning, um, but just giving a comprehensive overview of what was being proposed to give community members an opportunity to be conversant on the topic. Yeah, so um, did, was there a lot of interest? In those communities? There was. Communities? Again, we came on the invitation. So we came because um, a community group on the North Shore asked for information. So there was certainly interest already, but they just weren't quite sure where to get the information from. And um, the, I'd say the current, or the available pathways at that time, either one, were unfamiliar to them, or two, when they access it, it didn't really seem to yield the information they could understand. Um, and so just being able to give some background for Hawaii's utility infrastructure, as well as how that interacted with the current concern, was helpful for the community to get a good handle on what was going on. Yeah, it does sound interesting. Of course, I'm an energy Yes, <laughs> I'm yes, an energy person, very interesting so. for us. Yeah, yeah. So was it just one meeting? Was it a series? It was a series of meetings. Yeah, okay. so just some introductory information, obviously getting to know the team. We're a bunch of lawyers. I wasn't actually on that team, so I'm getting this third party information. But yeah. um, getting to know the students, getting to know the community members, understanding the questions that they had, understanding kind of where their baseline knowledge was, um, and then doing the research to understand what was currently happening, if and how that could affect the community, if there had been information presented specifically about that community, um, letting them know kind of where to get information in the future, and really what a change like that could mean for the utility. Yeah. Wow. So was it evenings, weekends, during the weekday? Um, I think they were evening you know? meetings. I don't remember yeah. the details. I'm, like I'm envisioning the report in my head right now, and yeah. I'm like, oh, I can't, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember if they were evening meetings. I'm yeah. going to assume so, yeah. largely because um, we have classes during the daytime. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm thinking they were probably evening meetings, just because um, evening meetings allow community members who right. aren't necessarily right. in energy to participate. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. So that's this. Yeah. So this is continuing. Um, yeah. So the second project was one on Molokai. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's been an ongoing effort. So I think Molokai, um, again, on the invitation of the community, so sustainable or sustainable Molokai, um, they have um, they have longstanding, I'd say, engagement with energy, yeah. and they've worked with Hawaii Energy. But then looking more into community energy and community energy planning, um, they had a connection with the law school, and so asked could some of your folks come out and just kind of do a snapshot of what could be possible here at Molokai and what are some concerns yeah. that might need to be addressed if the community wanted to look at community energy planning. So some students went out. There's a report on that on the Energy Justice website as well. Um, and then a colleague of mine and I, we were on Molokai last, I can't remember the month right now. I want to say last November. Yeah. Um, but um, last year, we'll just do that. We were there, actually it might have been this year. Anyways, I'm sorry, we were there, oh, no, um, and we met with yeah. some groups um, 
both from around Molokai and um, um, as well as around the world with a project that brought together community energy um, projects really from around the world, from Australia, Japan, Denmark, um, yeah. Greece, a few other places. Yeah. So I get the sense that you think that the community being interested in what's happening on the energy front is a mm -hmm. good thing. It's certainly good for us. It gives us an in. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, from a just outside of the energy justice you program. You hear what the community is right. thinking before, yeah, yeah. For planning and yeah. really provide an opportunity for collaborative planning. Um, I think the, the energy transition that we're seeking to implement is one that is quite grand. Um, and to the extent that we can make that a collaborative process where as many parties as possible benefit, um, and not strictly from a clean energy perspective, but really the benefits um, both in how a community develops and where things are cited, um, if there's monetary returns, if there's informational opportunities for communities. Um, there's really a lot of ways that people can benefit from collaborative energy planning. Yeah, yeah. So um, are the folks who participate in these, um, you know, how does this, this work? Do they go because their friends say, hey, we're going to get free food? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, you know, I mean, there are so, people um, are so busy, you know, basically yeah. it's, you know, having the place to go and something of interest and then yes. having open dialogue, you know, that doesn't happen in just like come and sit for half an hour and have somebody, you know, talk at you. It, it's, it's complicated, you know, you've got, you know, people, as I said, they're busy, they're doing other things right. and, you know, to have folks come out, you know, from, you know, from the law school side mm -hmm. or from the developer side and from the community to, mm -hmm. to, to discuss things, um, it seems to me that's, you know, that, that's a good thing if you can get it to work. So what are the elements of success or do you, that you've seen? I mean, I'm okay. sure there are lots of models and it probably depends on where. But, oh, um, certainly. There's actually a playbook. What motivates um. <laughs> folks to, to participate? Um, I couldn't speak on behalf of the community members who participated, um, but I can, I mean, there's a playbook for island community planning that the Rocky Mountain Institute has put forth. Okay. And there's also, uh, so the law school has also developed, well, not the law school so much, but the energy justice program um, has developed an energy democracy website where we talk about energy democracy and energy justice and what it means for community energy planning. Um, but so some of the highlights is that we're very reliant on partner organizations. So those different pieces that you're mentioning in the collaboration and kind of herding cats process, yeah, yeah. Um, that's not yeah. just law students doing that, yeah. um, but it's really identifying who in the who in the span of people you have contact to or contact with rather um, are going to be effective in the discussion and if you know that you can't reach the person that you think needs to be in the discussion then that's when we lean on our partners yeah. so as law students we can certainly garner the legal community the the law students just to have people there for like note taking and distillation and explaining things to people um, but getting the broader community involved we were really reliant on our community partner which was sustainable Molokai yeah yeah. Um, now, yeah. just a quick side. Okay, so the way they write their name has the okina, so yes. it's sustainable yes. Molokai. Yes. So, do you, are, I, I was, you know, just wondering, is it, if you say sustainable Molokai, it really sounds Australian. Okay. <laughs> is that correct, or do you that say sustainable? That is correct pronunciation. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've heard it pronounced both ways, but in creation, it was sustainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was, that's neat. It's like, wait, how do we, what's the proper yes. way to... I think yeah. they don't mince words about it too much, because okay. I've asked that question, and they're like, as long as people okay. are referencing us, I think <laughs> okay. it's okay. Yes. But um, no, so you're correct in sustainable. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, once they get, you know, folks probably come and listen to what's being thought about, or... You know, if there's a choice of one place or another, or mm. one technology or another. Um, oh. Um, but what about um, other other areas of interest? Because I'm sure most people who are interested enough to come and talk about energy want to know what they can do. You know, not yes. just to be there and give input for that moment. But are they also interested in doing things themselves or with their with their homes or their businesses or? Um. So I guess if I give you a framework for how the meeting goes, yeah. perhaps that will answer some of the questions okay, that you've asked. Thank you. um, so I can speak to Molokai because I was there and in the planning process. That was a day-long event, so about 10 to 4, 10 to 3. Um, 
And so there is an information sharing portion and then there's a listening portion. And it's intentional that way throughout the day there's information sharing and listening. Um, so if as we're sharing information about the subject matters that we are conversant in, um, a community wants to go on a, a community member has a question either about what we've shared or if it sparks something that leads in a different direction, um, they have an opportunity to bring those concerns to the table. And if the, if the capacity is in the room to respond, so we had, um, for, for this meeting, um, Half Moon Ventures was there as well as Miko, and so some of the questions we didn't necessarily have a response to, but the developer did, and they stood up in the crowd and responded, um, which we prepared those community partners for. Like, we hope that you'll be here, and if questions come, we hope that you're prepared to respond. But of course, that's nothing that we can say you have to, right, but we right. hope that your participation is such that people feel comfortable, and you feel comfortable in responding to questions that we haven't necessarily known would come. Yeah. Um, so in answering, people asked definitely what they could do as a community as well as what individually could be available to them and what, um, what developers had um, experienced in other developments on the mainland as well as if they'd had other establishments here in the islands. Um, and also asking the utility um, just kind of community outreach and, and whom they were speaking with and, and if they had been there before perhaps yeah. some community members weren't aware of it and like how is that information getting out so it was really an opportunity both for community members to recognize that many efforts had been undertaken by both developers and the utility as well as sustainable Molokai so different organizations had undertaken the effort of um, getting information out um, but some community members hadn't known so better understanding how do we reach how do we reach the community more broadly, more effectively? Yeah. Um, so we were able to have a pretty good dialogue around that. And then the closing portion was really an opportunity for people to just share their takeaways for the day, and not necessarily for the purpose of inspiring a response, but just to share. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, and that's a, that's a long amount of time. It was. Spend, we did have food. That they spent <laughs> on it. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This, this is, you know, Yes. It's a lot of expenditure of energy, it so is. you need some inputs there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, what other things um, do the environmental, um, sorry, energy justice program folks get involved with? Mm. I mean, so in our scholarship at, at law school, that's, yeah. um, the energy justice program is housed under the environmental law program. Yeah. Um, so we do look at environmental concerns from like an energy perspective and so myself and another student recently presented at the Hawaii Conservation Conference um, and we spoke about the need for energy development to more um, inclusively engage conservation environmentalists and just a broader spectrum of people who are doing efforts to conserve the land um, because I guess a broader effort you would say of renewable energy is to ultimately conserve the resources that we have here on earth um, but speaking more locally into the things that we see each day and the degradation that people experience from just kind of human traffic um, being able to speak with the community of conservationists and environmentalists as well and to educate them um, on renewable energy development and how we can collaborate on more successful development but also to learn some of their um, I don't want to say tactics so much, but that's what the word that comes to mind is learn their tactics in really garnering community support for action. Yeah. Um, and so we spoke about things that are already in Hawaii's laws that are unique to the state that allow that type of kind of yeah. creative approach, um, as well as community-based efforts that have shown success in conservation. Yeah, yeah I like the, the examples of success. We have to take a break right now, sure. but when we come back, um, let's talk more about that. Sounds good. Okay, thanks. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. We're going to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Try a little more, hard and every more, let's do what we can. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Okay, we're back. Welcome back. Rachel James, thank you so much again for being here on today's Energy Wednesday, uh, Hawaii State of Clean Energy. Now, we were talking about examples of success 
Yes. Um, how do we define success? I yeah. appreciate that question. Yes. Um, this is why I think it's so important to engage with communities. Um, because success from the perspective of a person who's developed a project or funded it or in some way has placed a project there might not be the same success that a community identifies with. Um, so I think success can be determined in a number of ways, but it's important that it's a collaborative determination and that as many parties as possible agree to what that success is from a diverse um, interest group. Yeah. So um, what would be some success, um, success uh, measures? Is it that nobody's complaining? I mean, I guess that's what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great starting point. <laughs> yes, you know. Um, um, I think certainly um, the 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 ease with which the process moves forward um, outside of the permitting process, because that's that's something that I don't know can necessarily be governed by good um, community relationships, but perhaps. But um, certainly not protests throughout the development. Um, and I remember speaking with. Um, I'm going to forget the person right now. Um, was this on Molokai or? No, it was, I think, on the Big Island, actually. Yeah. I think it was, mm, I want to say it was Kelly King. And if she's watching and I've misquoted, I apologize. Oh. Um, but just mentioning the development um, of, their, of their plant was without protest. And I remember her sharing that the reason for that was because they engaged the community early. And one, it wasn't a surprise. But two, it also reflected something that the community thought would actually be well housed there yeah. and so when it actually came about she was mentioning colleagues asking like well like where are your protesters and she's yeah. like well, <laughs> why would I have protesters yeah. um, so certainly yeah. that seems to be one clear identifier of success yeah. um, I think another is if there's an opportunity for the community to benefit monetarily right. so sometimes that can look like a community fund sometimes that's shared ownership um, sometimes that's communities develop cooperatives sometimes that's communities get community centers that have that are you know completely zero net energy and oh, yeah. perhaps as a learning center for the community yeah. maybe they didn't have one before so really it can look a lot of different ways but the primary thing is that the people who are making the decisions for the location um, have taken the time to speak to as many people from as many Get backgrounds from, yeah from yeah. the people at the location yeah yeah yeah, yeah I I can imagine um, situations where somebody says, oh, I've got to come up with something the community would like. I personally would like X, and yes. they go do that, and the community is like, what they do that for? Yeah, no, certainly <laughs> well intended, but sometimes right. just doesn't represent the community that is actually yeah. receiving the benefit. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So um, how about other measures um, that are maybe beyond you know, the community? Very often there are these scorecards and report mm. cards you know, put together by, you know, whoever needs to talk about something yes. sometimes, you know, saying, oh, this, this place is ranked high on this and low on that. I see. Um, to what extent should a community maybe determine for themselves what they'd like to see and what the measures of success would be, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. um, the community center that folks right. want or if it's, um, you know, somebody at least telling them what the benefit, you know, counting up the carbon dioxide emissions mm -hmm. avoided or something like that. Is that part of the conversation or does that get too complicated? Mm, I think the, the basis of conversation is to just get, I don't want to say just get input, but yeah. you can only dream as far as what you know. And so if a developer comes to the table and they have an understanding of what communities might want and a community has an understanding of what renewable energy can provide yeah. and those understandings come from very different places they may both come to the table and share something with the other and the response from each is gosh I never thought of that yeah. and it's not so much because either was malinformed so much as just they're only inspired by their own experience. Yeah. Um, so a lot of community energy planning, and the Department of Energy did um, a report where they did a series of case studies on different community energy planning projects and in that, um, I would say less measurements of success so much as things that they found um, helpful in the process of community energy planning. So they distilled out like nine steps that they felt were essential to having a quote unquote successful community ener energy planning process. Oh, that um, sounds good. Yes. You know, and so yeah. one of those things is having diverse party input um, and then having that input early on and having that input sustained throughout the process. Um, funding is also obviously a large piece. Right. Um, but then having consistent information and having kind of focal points for that information. So not just 
posting emails or you yeah. know, on websites or like I did a flyer at a community center, but really making sure your information is getting to constitu the constituency that you're seeking to inform um, and being available for information, responding to the information that you sent out. Yeah. How, you know, so, you know, talking about the different viewpoints of what is success, how do you get input, how do you measure success, mm -hmm. a question also comes to mind, and I don't know if, you know, anybody studied this, but there seems to be a natural evolution. It's like mm -hmm. we are thinking about the things we are normally thinking about, right? And mm -hmm. so people, you know, when you talk about energy, very often think, oh, my energy bill, yes. or what I pay for fuel, or how much fuel I use, or how much energy I use. And so they're thinking about it from a monetary, personal, or family finance point of view. And then you've also got the other view of, well, carbon emissions, and we need to have, you know, development of renewable resources to displace the need to mm -hmm. be burning the fossil fuels. Um, and so is there any measure of how that view of what your individual um, choices are or what your individual energy use is gradually gets informed by, wow, I'm having an impact on not only my local economy, but mm. also the state's accomplishment of its goals and, you know, the mm. whole global carbon thing. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is measured in any way? Because it seems to me that it's been happening. I mean, you didn't used to hear a lot about, you know, the bigger, the global concerns, mm. you know, and the climate change. And now you, you do. So something somewhere seems to have um, been changing that way. Mm. Um, do you notice that in communities too, or is that something somebody could do a research project on? I don't know. I want to make sure I'm following your question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the the change. You know, you come to a meeting saying, "I want lower. I, I want I want to spend less on energy," and you okay. may leave it saying, "Wow, you know, this this is more more this is broader than mm. um, what I'm paying next month." You know, I may be paying less and doing good things. That's the best. Yeah, um, I think. They begin um, to care. Many perspectives come to the table. Yeah. So while there are certainly people who are concerned about what they're going to pay or how much they cannot pay, yeah. um, you also have people who are really concerned about the environment. While they may not necessarily have the means um, to participate in what's readily available or programmatically or in tariffs with the current um, utility infrastructure, um, that hasn't lessened their kind of firm desire to be able to participate in the process. So. When what's been exciting is for people who have that predisposition to then learn that there is also potential for monetary benefit. Yeah. Um, that's the two so for one that you mentioned, where too. it's like, wow, yeah. So yeah. that's I I think we, I certainly can't speak for others, but I can say many people do kind of think of the community like that, that identifier as though like it's very singular, and that the community will have a perspective and. When I speak about community and when I speak about the success of those projects that are based yeah. in community, it's really because the fabric of the community has been represented in the process. I like that phrase. I like that because it is, you know, the <laughs> fabric of the, it is. It's a bunch of different folks mm. coming, coming together from different directions. Yes. And together. Um, yeah. So one, one person may be aware of what mm -hmm. several things are being discussed. But yeah, um, yeah I like, I like that. So what, what do you see as coming up? Can you say what's... Oh, certainly. Yes. Well, so okay. Hawaii, as I mentioned, has the CBRE program, um, Community-Based Renewable Energy. Okay. Um, and so it, there are applications currently open for subscriber organizations. Um, and what I think is unique about our program is that the subscriber organization is really kind of the space for creativity. And so that's the space where a developer, a community group, um, a series of community groups, nonprofits, where that can really look a lot of different ways. Um, and I think that's a space where Hawaii can really be creative right now. Um, the program has a pretty set infrastructure as far as how the utility, like how the utility is paying people and what your credit is going to be, but who that benefits and who is engaged in that development process of where the development is located, um, what size it is, and kind of who the players are and who's going to be benefiting. That's something that's fully within the sphere of the subscriber organization. So I'm, I'm interested to see how Hawaii plays with that. Um, and I think there's some pretty creative folks at the table. Oh, good. Yeah, glad to hear that. Yeah. I, I know back when we were looking at the in that originally, many, many years ago. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's been an effort. Talking, yeah, they were talking about the community-based 
projects. Yes. And a lot of folks were like, oh, I got solar co solar par solar covered parking. Yeah. I want shade for my car. You know, maybe it's an electric car or maybe it's an right. electric bus or maybe it's electric bicycles, but we want shady parking lots. It was funny. There was so much enthusiasm. I mean, I'm, yes. I, I like shady parking lots, too, if you're going to have a parking lot. You know, it would be nice if the sun was being directed to some yeah. useful purpose. But, yeah. uh, no, and that's yeah, that's where yeah. the community, or as I said, the subscriber organization can really be creative. Yeah. So the first phase is strictly solar panels, um, but we're hopeful, and as identified by the tariff, there should be in the second phase opportunities for other, not only generation sources, but pairing with storage as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. So are those, um, if a community um, or a group of some sort wants to talk to folks at your Energy Justice Center? Do they send an email? You, you said you have a website. We do. Okay. And I should have brought the website to oh. tell you what it is. Well, if but you if Google. you yes, if you Google <laughs> search Energy Justice Program, William S. Richardson School of Law, um, you'll certainly find that website. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then contacting the environmental law program again is what um, houses the energy justice program. So the email information there is also a ready contact. And people who are interested can also just contact me. And that's Rachel, um, well, yeah. rjames9 at hawaii.edu. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess um, you're looking forward to seeing what folks come up with yes. and working together to develop some good projects. Indeed. Yeah. So do you only focus on Oahu? I know you mentioned Molokai. Mm -hmm. So it seems like there's some, is it a statewide initiative, the energy? Justice? Well, so Hawaii's law school is the state's law school. Yeah. Um, so while we're focused, um, I would say on the state we're located in Honolulu. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. by virtue of our location, our immediate access points are here on island. Um, but to the extent that we have partners on other islands, we certainly um, look forward to that outreach as well. So Molokai, we have a strong partner there. Um, we've been there and a developing partnership with Maui. Yeah. Um, and then um, I'd say those are our strongest at present. Um, yeah, but we've got yeah. um, a graduate who's working with um, some communities on Hawaiian homelands on the big island. So oh, developing partnerships. Yeah. 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 Um, do you ever work with the counties? I mean, we only have about a minute, a minute left. Oh, but, okay. But, um, you know, because I'm thinking transportation, you know, you, you've probably got limited resources. And so could there be like a Skype or a Zoom type of oh, um, meeting or something? I that guess seems that possible in one minute time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would be energy efficient on the transportation <laughs> side as well. Yeah. Yes. No, that certainly seems possible. Um, we've recently, um, a, a new director has accepted the position. So Richard Walsgrove, formerly yeah. with Blue Planet Foundation, oh, yeah. is now the energy justice program. Well, that is not the specific title. Whatever. That, yeah. Yes. So he is now the director there. Oh, um, exciting time. So, yes, definitely. Yeah. So what he has in store, we have yet to see. But um, just historically, he's been super supportive of our efforts. So yeah. I figure we'll probably carry on the same vein as well as some new things. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This has been very interesting. So you heard it here. Energy um, Justice Program fellow Rachel James telling us about some of their successes, how they determine success, and the importance of the community being involved in discussing what to do and how to do it and feeling a sense of um, ownership and, or at least appreciating the benefits that can come to the state as a whole when we reach our energy objective. Thank you so okay. much for having Thank me. Thank you. Thank you very much.